of divine pattern in the family. The entrenchment of divine pattern in the family. Please, I will pause to say this. This crane should face this brethren on this side. Please, the media should do that. Praise the Lord. Help me repeat that. The entrenchment of divine pattern in where? In the family. Now, last Sunday, we began a discussion that gave us an insight into what divine pattern is. We saw that divine pattern are event or happenings that relate with the will, the plan, and the purpose of God. When the things that are God's will, his plan, and his purpose is unfolding in your life, then you can say, my life is going according to God's divine pattern. But when the things that are happening in your life is in contrast with what God has ordained for your life, that then can be called a demonic pattern. Jesus speaking said, my life will go according to how God had patterned it. God has a divine pattern for everything he created. The sun don't shine in the night. The sun rises in the morning. Because that is how God patterned it to be. Amen. God is a God of patterns. Everything he created is according to how you ordained them to go. I pray for someone today. Your life will not be in conflict with divine pattern. Yeah. We saw examples of divine, of what a divine pattern is. The Bible said, from the time that the ark of the Lord entered the house of Obed-Edom, everything began to take shape. We also have an example of a demonic pattern. One woman married seven brothers. They all died. After they all died, then she died. That is not a divine pattern. Lift up your two hands like you are ready for a divine visitation. In the name of Jesus Christ, 2022 and going forward, your life will take a divine pattern. Yeah. The shape of your life, the color of your life, the happenings of your life will be divine patterns. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. But this morning, our focus is on how we can entrench divine pattern to begin to afford in our families. How what God has ordained is the only thing prospering in our families. So when you say the entrenchment of divine pattern in the family, what does it mean? It means being the person through whom God ends the era of what is not God's plan and purpose for our family. You and I being the individual who will take a stand and say, in my family, whatever do not resemble that which is of God must end in my family. If you believe that, say Amen. amen. Whatever do not agree with what God has ordained must not continue in my family. And that can happen when you take a stand as a person, as a believer, and you say from today, only what God has ordained that we stand in my family. Only what God has ordained Anything outside that is not permitted to continue in my family. If that is your prayer this morning, can you say a better amen? amen? It also means being the person who promotes and ensures 
that God's plan and purpose prospers in the family. Please note what we are discussing this morning. How do I entrench the workings of God in my family? How do I ensure that only what God has ordained happens in my family? That can be when you rise up as a person and you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, only what God has ordained that we stand in my family. And then you also say, what God has not ordained cannot stand in this family. I'm already praying for a family. So when what God has not ordained must not prosper. Two, what God has ordained is what will prosper. Come on. Can I hear someone repeat? Say, what God has not ordained for my family. Oh, if you are not very sure of it, please, you can be quiet while the rest of us will say it. Say, what God has not ordained for my family is not permitted to prosper in my family. The era or season of what God has not ordained is over in my family. Now in the same vein, lift up your voice and say from today, from today only what God has ordained God has that, will that will prosper in my family. If you believe the, both things that you have said, can you shout a good amen? amen? Judges 6 verse number 25 to 26 gave us insight into how an individual by the name Gideon became a person through whom a divine pattern was entrenched in his family. Nature abhors vacuum. If you are going to see the workings of the will, the plan and the purpose of God in your family, you can't leave it to chance. It won't even happen by mere wishes. There are people who wish that the things that should be happening in their families should take the shape of what God has ordained, yet they are doing nothing about it. You must come to a point as a child of God and you say, this is not right. This is not how it should be. Jesus said, in the beginning, it was not so. So whatever is not so, according to God's agenda, cannot continue in my family. Say amen. amen. In Judges 6, 25 to 26, the Bible said, that same night, the Lord said to Gideon, choose your father's best bull. The one that is seven years old, first, Use it to pull down the altar your father built to worship by. Lift up your right hand. For Gideon, it was the blood of the bull that was required. For us in the New Testament church, we don't need the blood of bulls. We already have the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of the Messiah. The blood of the one who died and rose against Jesus. I declare by the authority of the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. Any altar in your family line that is speaking against destinies and speaking against lives. I pull it down in the name of Jesus. Whatever is an altar in your family line that is not the altar of the Almighty God, that is not the altar of Jehovah, that is not the altar of holiness, that is not the altar of favor, I declare in the name of Jesus that altar crumbles from today. Give your rise up, there is an altar in your father's house. Gideon, I raise you in such a time as this to become Jeruba. Jeruba means a, a destroyer of an altar of bars. Gideon, rise up. You may have been called Gideon, but you have the destiny of Jeruba. Meaning, you are the one to pull down that altar in your family. Can I pray for someone this morning? Can I hear the sound of my voice? 
The altar that says sons will not do well, I set it on fire in Jesus' name. The altar that says daughters will not stay in their marriages, I set it on fire in the name of Jesus. The altar that speaks poverty into a family line, I don't know what who erected that altar, I don't know the power backing that altar. In the name of Jesus, I destroy that altar. The altar that says you will rise and fall, you will begin and not finish, you will labor and not accomplish, I put down the altar in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't worry, as we progress, you will get to know what that altar or what is that altar. Gideon, get up, take a sacrifice from your father's animals. Use the sacrifice to put them. Child of God, every altar is erected by sacrifice. And if you are going to pull down any altar, it can only be pulled down by sacrifice. But for you and I, we already have an assured sacrifice. The sacrifice made on the cross of Calvary. The sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. And that is why I can confidently tell you this this morning. The devil has lost his place in your life. You will succeed. You will share. You will be great. Amen. Your life will be a blessing. Amen. Pastor Oju, why are you so confident of that? Because 2,000 years ago, the Bible said, Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. He said, use it to put down the altar your father built to worship her. And also call down the Assyrian pole beside the altar. Pull it down. Then 26. Then God now said, Then. Someone said, Then. Amen. Come on, I can't hear you as God's people. Can you shout it? Amen. Then do what? Build the right kind of altar for the Lord your God. It means the altar that he had to put then is not the right kind of altar. Don't see that then looking cute and looking so sophisticated and not open the eyes of your heart to know that in every family there's an altar. That must go down. Yes. Are you still here? Yes, if you are spiritually inclined, you will know. Because altars, we utter what God has ordained. Altars, we utter destiny. Altar, we cause a family that God has ordained to raise kings to have non entities. Evil altars will alter the destinies of daughters. We are going to roar like lion. God do not need many. He needs an individual. Here, he wasn't speaking to many. He was speaking to one man. Who is that one man or that one woman through whom God will destroy whatever is evil and build whatever is of God? Who is that person? If you are here, say, I'm here. I'm here. Come on, if you are here, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. You can't be alive and see things going, in, going on in your family and you are okay by it. The worst thing that can happen to a man is to have a problem and not know that you have a problem. To have a problem and not know that you have a problem is worse than having a problem. Once you come to the realization that this is not how it should be. This is not how my life should be. Jabez came to a point where he said, I can't continue like this. And he cried out. Anna came to a point that said, I can't be eating double portion of meat and my husband telling me, I am me more than 10 sons and then I'm okay. No, I must carry my own baby in my womb. Someone here, you must live in your own house. Yeah. You must become an employer of labor. Yes, you must become a lender. Yes, the days of being indebted are over for you now. Yes, say they build the right kind of altar for the Lord your God. He said, build it on this high ground. Then kill and burn the bull on this altar. Use the wood from the Assyrian pole to burn your offering. Now, when we have read, we've seen how God himself spoke to Gideon. Gideon, there's an altar in your father's house that must be pulled down. 
And when you have done so, don't allow vacuum. Now erect the proper kind of order that will cause things to begin to go right in your family. Amen. Amen. Are you still here? <laughs> Lift up your right hand because you are the Gideon that we emerge in your family. You are the Jerubah that we emerge in your generation. Evil, witches and wizards, occultic power, demonic activities will no longer prosper in your family line. Darkness will not rule over your family. Satanic authority will not govern destiny in your family. Malisha Garoshikatalababa, satanic agent will not have a financial over your family. La Rocha Labo, am I praying for the right people this morning? Your life and your family line will not go according to demonic details. Kolusha Bobo, I feel I shouted this morning because something is already happening to a family. In the name of Jesus Christ, demonic pattern is terminated in your family. Kalasha la ragada shalaba, labori and labori and labori and labori, and no one is doing well. The family line is over in the name of Jesus. Malika Roshi Abagado Lika Rupa Katusha Katalabakuri Sheketika Tulakasha Lakaraba Shalaba Whoever shut doors against your family destiny That door is open now You have escaped by the blood of Jesus You have escaped in the name of Jesus Papa Pato Toki Katusha Luka Tosha Labaya Baya You who is part of this meeting You are the first person to go forward to your family You will be the first to go higher in your family Others will begin to follow your pattern. Others will begin to follow your pattern. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know who that person is. You are about to do something that no one has done before in your family. In the name of Jesus. Something is about to happen in your life that has never happened to anyone before in your family. Favor is about to happen to you. Goodness is about to happen to you. Blessing is about to happen to you. Promotion is about to happen to you. Please take your seat wherever you are. Because we are going to be doing serious business this morning. The time has come for us not to fold our hands. Jeroboam, wake up. Get your eyes up. It is your duty. Tear down the evil altar. And then build the proper kind of altar. Now, the entrenchment of divine pattern, whose responsibility it is? Who is to take it? Who is the one that take that responsibility to ensure that Things that have God is what prospers in your family. Whose responsibility is it? You know, most of us believers, we are good at looking for pastors, looking for the latest minister of God with so much anointing. We run to them. Anywhere we, anywhere we hear, or anytime we hear, they are somewhere we run there. But I'm sure that if not all of you, most of you will agree with me that even though you have gone to, you've gone to these places many times, your life has not changed. Now, I'm not against anyone going to pastors if that is what you choose to do. But if you are spiritually intelligent, you will know that spiritual responsibilities when it is abdicated, you will never get the best of God. I'm going to repeat that again. When spiritual responsibilities are abdicated, that is, you delegate it to someone else, you will never get the best of God. If Anna had said, Eli, pray for me so that I have children, she would have ended her life in barrenness. That is not to say that the prayers of Eli were not effective. It simply means that God was waiting for her to pray. Listen. Miracle seekers, listen. When you have degraded the responsibility that are spiritual, that will engender the will of God to happen in your life to your pastor alone, to one prayer warrior alone, you will never get the best of God. Now, imagine if Eli was given the sole responsibility to pray to terminate the barrenness of Anna. It won't work because it wasn't only the prayer of Anna that turned situation around. There was also the dimension of a vow. So God was worried both for the prayers of Anna and the vow of Anna. And when Anna 
took up that responsibility, heaven said, open a womb. And what was the end result? And now come on, child that the world will never forget. Lift up your two hands. From today, may God grant you grace to undertake the responsibility that will cause you to become a wonder in your world. Amen. For some of us who are pastors, we are very good in telling people, come, I'll pray for you. Yes, we do pray. Yes, we do pray. But you must go beyond someone praying for you to engage in in a prayer exercise. There is something about God hearing you pray. There is something about you say, how about Father? And the Bible said, two or three shall agree. Then you stay at home, come late to church, play around, and you expecting that divine pattern will be entrenched in your family. Well, I'm not going to say it's impossible, maybe by the message of God. But you know what? The time has come for you to say no. I won't wait for those powerful pastors to pray for me. I'm going to approach God. I am not the stepchild of God. I am not an orphan. God is my father. Someone shout that with conviction. Say, God is my father. I love what the prodigal son said. He said, I will go to my father. When believers come to a point where they say, I will go to my God, then God will say, here I am. He said, when you seek me, you shall find me. When you seek me with all your heart. Are you still here? I told you how my idols were thrown away by myself. You can't do it when they say, I'm a child of God. I can't take this nonsense anymore. And that will be with divine insight. When you, when you, by the word of God, realize who you are in Christ. And then you see who you are not. Then you can say, it is over now. It is over now. Sickness is over now. Amen. Amen. Rising and falling is over now. Amen. Shame is over now. Amen. Reproach is over now. Amen. Fearful living is over now. Amen. Can you shout that amen? You see, some of you are not saying amen because your, your makeup will be messed up. Shout amen. Let it crack. You can put it on that way. Listen, shout a better amen. amen. Don't allow your makeup say, no. Shout it. If he pull off, do another one. Are you still here? I'm praying for someone today. It's a serious business. In the name of Jesus Christ, something is about to happen in your life that will cause your family to celebrate. Amen. So whose responsibility it is to entrench a divine pattern? One. The person who possesses the life of God. You can't dare challenge the ancient ruins. You can't dare challenge the evils of your ancestors when you do not possess the life of God. So the person who is a possessor of the life of God, John said, in him was life. Which life? The life of God. And by that life, he became the light of man. Related that to this discussion this morning, in him was life, or in her was life. And by that light, you become a light in your family. Then that light shines in the family. And the darkness of the family, oh boy, could not comprehend it. Lift up your right hand like an army of God, aggressive to pray this morning. Say, I am a light. I am a light. Because I have the life of God in me. I, I will shine as a light. In my family, and no darkness in my family line can stop me, and you will shine. Yeah. Whose responsibility it is to entrench divine pattern in the family? The person who desires divine experiences in the family. You look at your husband, you look at your wife, you look at your children, you say, The time has come that our lives must resemble Christ. Our lives and happiness must resemble the redeemed. I will follow him. What is happening in this family must be in line with what God has ordained. So when you desire divine experiences in your family, then it is your responsibility to ensure that you make it happen. How many of you desire to have divine experiences happen in your family? Amen. Say that amen like you are the only one here. Amen. Whose responsibility is this? The person who is spiritually matured, strong, sensitive, and responsible. 
Don't forget, the person who is to entrain divine pattern in the family is the person, are you still here? Are you still here? Who possesses the life of God. By the life of God that is in you, you become a light that darkness cannot quench. Who, whose responsibility it is to entrench divine pattern, that is to entrench the ordained will of God, to entrench what God has ordained, what God has planned in the family. Are you still here? The person, are you still here? The person who desires that in your family there should be divine experiences. Elder brother not doing well. Elder sister out of marriage. Younger brother in prison. The other one has epilepsy. The other one just died some few years ago. No, no, no. Someone shot never again. Yes. Will anything that the devil has ordained happen in my family. In my family. Only what God has all there. I wish your voice is louder. Only what God has all there is permitted to prosper in my family. If you say that, shout amen. If you are going to be able to entrench the order of things according to what God has ordained in your family, you must possess the life of God. Otherwise, <laughs> How can you fight a battle that you don't have the power to fight? I heard of a young man who went to his father's house and carried the father's idol, threw it away. He came back home naked. Yeah. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Child of God, the things our eyes cannot see, they are more than the things that our eyes can see. The problem of most believers is that they are blind. When God opens your eyes, you will sleep and snore all through life. You will rise up and take your place and become the Jeroba that will cause divine pattern in your family. Are you still here? If you are going to entrain divine pattern, you must be somebody who is spiritually matured, spiritually strong, spiritually sensitive or intelligent, and spiritually responsible. Uh, I don't like the way things are going in my children's life. Are you taking spiritual responsibilities? Do you pray for them? If Anna had not prayed, her barrenness would become her portion forever. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. You need a change, you don't pray. You need a change, you don't fast. You need a change, you are not serving. You need a, a, a change. You are not doing what God asked you to do. So, the person who is spiritually matured, the Bible says, and the child was strong. And remained in the desert. He was strong in spirit. You can't fight a battle. No, there is no way David would have conquered Goliath if God was not with him. If you are still here, say amen. amen. Then you are spiritually intelligent. Spiritually intelligent. You come to church, you don't sleep during church service because you know that the one that will change you, the one that will inspire you, the one that will transform you, the one that will give you an idea will come. And anytime sleep is coming, you say, this sleep, you are not ordinary. I rebuke you. Amen. Because you are spiritually intelligent. When you are spiritually intelligent, you will not compromise your time of prayers. When you are spiritually intelligent, you will not compromise your time to study the word of God. When you are spiritually intelligent, you won't allow distractions. I've been in this church before since 15. And I shut my door. The only time I came out is to see how the service has been arranged. And I went back again, shut the door again. Because somebody is coming to service today that must be set free. Yeah. I'll be playing around. You come to church, I'll be doing, you'll be going around. You are not spiritually intelligent. I saw a lady, I don't know where she said that this morning. Before sister, I saw her walk, before, uh, so a few minutes after service, I saw her walk into the church. Service is resuming or starting by 8. Before 7.30, you are already in church. What an opportunity. No distractions. Sit down. Kalashabo. <laughs> and spend the next 30 minutes to settle issues with God. And watch your life. When you see people do that, it's because they are spiritually intelligent. People who are not spiritually intelligent will come early to church and then go around. They will even gossip before service. Be talking up and down, be running up and down. Come on. Come on, have you seen any student who is exceptional? They are always studious. They don't have time for fun and all of those things. They don't have time for child's play. 
Imagine you came to church this morning and you prayed before you left home. And you said, Father, as your servant will step on the altar, oh God, let there be a change in my life. Will God disappoint you? No. Imagine you said, year 2022, I won't miss one service. It's my vow to God that God said, you mean it? Let's see. Miss, just imagine that you said, Every service day, I will not allow worship to take place without me not being part of it. When you see people who are spiritual giant in the kingdom, they didn't buy it from the market. They paid the price. They didn't inherit it. You cannot be remain a spiritual babe and confront ancient authors. Forget it. Until Jerubah pulled down the altar in his father's house, that was not a proper author. No son, no daughter will do well. Go to the best university in the world. You will come back and end in the same circle where others ended. But lift up your right hand. You are breaking forth. Amen. You are changing the narrative. Amen. You are making a difference. Amen. You are rewriting the handwriting on the wall. Amen. If the handwriting was a family that don't do well, you are rewriting the handwriting to a handwriting of the family that are doing well. Are you still here? So if you are going to entrench a divine pattern, one, you must be a carrier of the life of God. He said, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this eternal life is not in church. It's not in your unit. It's in Christ. He that has the son possesses that life. In him was life. And by that life, he became the light of men. And darkness were trying to do katikati. And the Bible said, and that light shines that darkness could not. Can I pray for someone here whose hand will be the first to go up? Darkness can't stop you. Amen. Darkness can't stop your family. Amen. Darkness can't stop your children. Amen. Darkness can't stop your family life. Amen. You know why I can say that confidently to you? He said, for the sake of Jacob, I will deliver the household of Israel for your sake. And for you being in this meeting this morning, your family will be delivered from demonic pattern. Amen. Quickly this morning, three factors that will entrench divine pattern in our families. Three things. One, build and faithfully maintain a spiritual culture of worship. Build and faithfully maintain <laughs> somewhere you will get it this morning first build it then sustain it create a culture of the true worship of God in John 4 Jesus said God is a spirit and those who must worship him or who should worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth you want breakthrough you want your destiny to be released you want your marriage whom, that you have dreamt over and over again, yet it's not happening. When God reveals things to you, they are, still in the, they are still in the heavenly realms. To be able to convert them from the heavenly realms into reality, you must be a true worshiper of who? Of God. You can't serve God like you are doing God favor. God is not a bank looking for customers to deposit money. He is God all by himself. He's self-existing. He's self -made. You worship him, you don't worship him, he's the God. But if you don't worship him, you can't become who he made you. Because he created us to worship him. So don't make a young guy for God that you are coming to church. Worship him in spirit and what? And in truth. In Judges 6, verse number 24, before God told Gideon, to destroy the altar in his father's house, Gideon did something that led to that. So, Judges 6, verse number 24. Let's read together. One to go. What did they say? So, Gideon built an altar there. To do what? So, God didn't just show up in Gideon's life because he was looking. No, no, no. He showed up because Gideon created an atmosphere for God to show up. You create an atmosphere of worship. Kalashalada. Can I declare this over you? All your enemies are in trouble. Yeah. Once you are a worshiper of God, 
In spiritual warfare, you cannot be conquered. Are you with me? No worshiping God like you are. No. He said, give your build an altar. This was his own personal altar to God. It was when he built this altar, God had to say, well, you have built your own altar of my worship. But you know what? This is good. But there's a higher level. Take it further and visit your father's house. There is an altar there that is not allowing you to excel as you should be. Lift up your two hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God use you to liberate your family life. There are some Christians, their own Christianity is me and God, me and God. You are not a good Christian. Yes, it is you and God. But with you and God, you become a light in your family. I used to hear. A woman told me, Pastor, the husband is a politician. Since 1999, he has never won any elective position. Since 1999, when democracy came back. He keep campaigning and not winning. Keep campaigning and not winning. Keep campaigning. Keep spending money because he inherited a lot of money from his father. So the woman said to me, Pastor, I had to go before God. I didn't tell him who. And I said, Daddy, anything that is making my husband to keep contesting and not winning, show it to me. And he said, God told me. And three years ago, the husband won. All these coming to church and you show in, the church will not drive you away. If you come when we're about to share the grace, we'll still collect your offering from you. Amen. It's none of our business. Pay your life. Cannot experience God's best. Give your heart to first build an altar between him and God. And the Bible said, so give your build an altar there to worship the Lord and name it. <laughs> Lift up your hand. Peace is coming to your family. Amen. Not just the peace of man. The peace of God is coming to your life. Amen. And named it. And named it. The Lord is peace. And the Bible says, it is still, it still stand in the city of Oprah where the Abyssia family lives. Stop all this. I have compassion on young people. If you can't serve God well when you are young, <laughs> while are they? Build that strong relationship with God that if men are coming, I told you how someone called me and said, I saw you. This is the second time after 20 years. Said, I had a dream, you died. And I laugh. And I said, That is a plot of the wicked. It cannot happen. Someone say it cannot happen. <laughs> when you are a true worshiper of God, you are confident of your life in Christ. I came home, I was telling my wife, smiling. Nothing like, I'm going to pray. Oh. You push your prayer, you push your fast for me, oh, you know. They said I died. Me, died. I still have an assignment here. Three reasons why that cannot happen. One, my relationship with God. Two, I don't joke with my head. If I'm tired, I rest. I don't eat anything they say that I can eat. I select my food. I'm very, very selective. I know when to eat. I know when not to eat. I don't dig my grave with my teeth. <laughs> no, I don't. Then three, I'm on assignment for God. Someone celebrate the goodness of the Lord upon your life. If I call any of you and I say you died, you will even die before tomorrow because fear. Oh, pastor say I died. I died. If you see trailer come and say, maybe this one want to kill me, you run away. The psalmist said, I am confident of this one thing. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm going to carry my grandchildren. I don't know whether you are receiving that. I'm going to carry my grandchildren. I'll be playing that. Have I told you before? Have I told you before? I know in your mind that you know what is playing in the mind of some of you. Those who died, are you better than them? I'm, I'm not comparing myself with them. This is me. They are who they are. I'm who I am. My daughter baby must be carried by me. My son's child must be carried by me. Yeah. I love grandchildren. I'm not having children again. My own children. That one is over for life. I used to hear. But I'm waiting for my grandchildren. 
and you with your coconut head you say you want to kill me it can't happen if god be for me who can be against me celebrate your longevity in christ i'm going to declare it several times and somebody grab it that before any other person peace peace in your life peace peace in your family peace peace in your family life peace peace in your household peace peace in your household peace peace in your family are you still there? True worshippers of God are confident of God. Because when you are a true worshipper of God, you and God are one. In the morning you wake up. Do you know what? God inhabits the household of his worshippers. Amen. Come on. I said amen. amen. Examples of those who had a spiritual culture of worship. I'm almost done. We have many of them in the Bible. I'll give you a few. One, Noah. In Genesis 8 verse number 20, the Bible says, Noah built an altar unto the Lord. What is the essence of altar? We're going to see that later. Altar is a place of worship. Altar is a place of communion. So Noah, and you see today, the Bible said, the whole earth were destroyed. But Noah was exempted. Because he knew how to worship God. He was a worshiper of God. Amen. Amen. Then, in Genesis 12 verse number 7, we are told Abraham built an altar. Follow the sequence. Noah built an altar to the Lord. Abraham built an altar. The Isaac in Genesis 26, 25, we are told also built an altar. And the altar that Isaac built, the Bible says, he called on the name of the Lord. Lift up your hand with a fist like they say tonight, or today rather. I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. And there will be a change in my family. If your hand is not lifted up, you know why you are not. The best. Do it again. Say, from today, I will consistently pray for my family. And the Lord will do his will in my family. Say amen if you mean what you said. Noah built an altar. Abraham built an altar. I see built an altar. Then we are told in Genesis 35 verse number 7, Jacob also built an altar. Follow the sequence of the patriarch. The powerful characters in the Bible, they all had an altar. Amen. When I was growing up as a young man, there is hardly any house you will enter in this city where there is no altar. They put it by the door by the house. Thank God for Christ. Those altars have been demolished. Amen. Amen. Even though the physical altars have been removed somehow, those altars are still in the heart of men. That's when we turn that strike, they, they are still obeying the doctrines of those altars. Lift up your right hand. If you are of light and you represent light in your family, lift up your right hand. You are going to shine. Idolatry shall not rule over your family. The effect of idolatry on any man or woman in your family life will end from today. In the name of Jesus. Now, quickly, we have seen that God told Jerubal, which was the account we saw earlier in Judges 6, 24 and 25. Gideon, rise up! Take a bull from your father's bull. Sacrifice it. Pull down the altar in your father's house. When you have done that, build another altar unto me. We are we commune with you and have impute in your family. So what is an altar? We shall know build an altar. Abraham built an altar. Isaac built an altar. Jacob built an altar. So what is an altar? An altar is a place of spiritual connection, interaction, and revelation between humanity and divinity. That is between man and God. It's a place of connection. It's a place of communion. It's a place of revelation. It's a place where God speaks to his people. Child of God, I think I should put it in the form of a prayer. What is stopping you from moving to the next level? God will reveal it to you this season. Yeah. What you must do that will cause your life to become an envy, God will reveal it to you. Yeah. How? Because you now have an altar, a place where you worship God. You wake up in the morning, you go before your altar. Please note, an altar may not be a location. An altar is a time you spend with God. It's a time you spend with God. 
Anywhere you kneel, anywhere you bow your head, anywhere you spend time with God becomes an altar. For us as a ministry or as a branch, I'm standing in an elevated platform now which we call an altar and I'm ministering to you. Do you know that whatever I say from this altar is given to me by God and if you believe it, it will magnet your life. Yes. Are you still there? Yes, sir. So anywhere you go, you bow your knees and you pray. The Bible said, a certain king had a dream. He forgot his dream. And he called all the magicians, all the astrologers, that he should come and tell him his dream. And none of them could tell him his dream. So he threatened to kill all of them. Then the news got to Daniel. And Daniel went to the king. You are the one who had a dream. You forgot your dream. And you are saying they should tell you both the dream you had and the meaning of the dream. Well... No man can tell you that, but we'll go to our God. Today, I pray that someone with that sickness that comes and go, receive grace to go to your God. Amen. And the Bible said, Daniel went home, called his friends, and said, there is a matter that no human being can resolve, but God can resolve it. Pray with me. And they went before God. And the Bible said in Daniel 2 verse number 19, during the night, the misery. Misery is something that you can't understand by your human reasoning. Misery is something you can't understand by your intellect. Was revealed. Was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. An altar is a place of spiritual connection, interaction, revelation between you and your God. Someone, that sickness is over now. Yeah. What is an altar? Altar is a place of spiritual engagement and agreement between man and God. If you will, between woman and God. <laughs> it's a place of spiritual engagement. Oh, come on. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My wife cannot be barren. Isaac went and engaged God. And the Bible said, and God terminated the barrenness of Rebekah. An altar is a place of spiritual engagement. This is not where you make gra gra gra, be shouting and make all the noise. You engage God. Jacob said, unless you bless me, I will not let you go. Engagement. 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 This is not what you possibly do in the church. Most times. When you are alone. You look for a solitary place. You look for a quiet place. You tell your husband, honey, can you give me today? I want to be alone with God. The Bible says Jacob was left alone. There are a lot of issues in our life that cannot be resolved because we have never been alone with God. Facebook will not allow us. Social media will not allow us. Somebody say, I'm waiting on the Lord. And you have three phones. And all of them with data. Switch on. Your friend chat you. How are you doing, bros? He say, I'm fine. I'm on the mountain. You are not in any mountain. An altar is a place of spiritual engagement. Where you say, God, I have no one else to go. I have visited all the hospitals. No solution. I'm going nowhere. Me and you. You engage God, you agree with God. Oh, come on, shout amen here. Matthew 18, 19. He said again, these are the words of Jesus. I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, you ask for what will, be the, what will happen? It will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Just come, engage me, agree with me. He said, Heaven will do it. Lift up your rider. Someone, you are about to get the favor that will make you a global envy. Yeah. What is an altar? An altar is a place where spiritual matters are resolved, that determines events in the natural. <laughs> An altar is a place where you resolve spiritual matters. God revealed to you that your child fell into a well. And then you are busy telling everybody, even the pastor has had a dream, my child fell into a well. That is not the best approach. God revealed it to you so that you can settle it. So that you can resolve it. You saw yourself wearing a white garment. Suddenly they pulled it and gave you a black one to wear. And you are still doing miracle. I don't have time to pray. No. No, I had a dream one time. Something happened to my daughter. And I said, this matter, we must settle it. Lift up your right. Receive the grace to settle your matter between you and God. 
That's the one you carry your handbag and be looking for. I saw one church on television. They said it's in the social place. It's not moving up and down. There are many Christians who are wanderers. And by so doing, they have become so wayward. Someone came to see me. I said, are you a Christian? She said, yes. Which church? She said, eh, eh. You will know the church. I said, what is the name? Eh, eh. It's somewhere so, so, so. The man is on television. What is the name of your church? Can you imagine someone being a member of a church and you don't know the name of your church? Those are spiritual prostitutes. They don't stay in one place for too long. They are spiritual shoppers. Window shopping. They come here, they look at this one. This man of God is a big priest, but not the see vision. <laughs> Move. This other one is a big priest. The see vision. It will like money. <laughs> this other one, he mm, like women too much, but God, they use them. <laughs> this other one, now so, so pray, and I they pray. It's not a big priest. <laughs> so you keep moving until your life is over. But that will not be you in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say a better amen? amen? There are some believers who are just wayward. Very wayward. In their phone, they have 30 pastors, including my own there. They don't call me very often because when they call, they say it's where. They say it's not where. You are telling me it's where. What do you want me to say? Say to the righteous, it is where. They shall eat the fruit of their labor. Lift up your two hands. I say to you, 2022, it shall be well with you. Come on. I declare it by the Spirit of God. It shall be well with your family. It shall be well with your sons. It shall be well with your daughters. I'm not done. You will eat the fruit of your labor. I'm declaring that in the name of Jesus, you will eat the fruit of your labor. An altar is a place where spiritual matters. You don't go to altar with paderiam and then the altar is not where you cook food and eat. It's where you resolve spiritual matters. The Bible says, said, said to us in 1 Kings 18 verse number 42b after Elijah had told Ahab. Amen. I said amen. amen. He said go and tell Ahab. He should eat and drink. Tell him. He should eat and drink. Something is about to happen now. That has not happened for the past three and a half years. Go and eat. Celebrate. But the man who understood the power of the altar. The Bible says climb to my camel. Tuck his head between his legs. Your child is about to write an exam. Your child just got admission. Your child is about to graduate. Your child is about to get married. Your child is about to go for an interview. Your husband is about to contest for an election. And then you are busy going on. Child of God, there is a time you put your head between your legs. That means I am not looking at anything but God. The Bible says he tuck his head between his two legs. And prayed and prayed. When he got up, he said, tell Ahab to go very fast. Otherwise, before he will get to where he's going, the rain will stop him. For someone, the rain of favor is about to fall in your family. Amen. I need somebody with the strongest amen. amen. <laughs> I said, I need somebody with the strongest amen. amen. Drought is over in your family. Amen. Poverty is over in your family. Amen. Delay is over in your life. Amen. Disappointment is over in your life. Amen. Come on. Who is saying that amen that I needed to hear? I said, Stagnancy is over in your life. Amen. I see rain of favor, Amen. rain of glory, Amen. rain of blessings, Amen. rain of celebration. Amen. How did the rain come? The rain came because someone engaged an altar, engaged God. Farakatasha kakalapakosia. The Bible said Elisha or Elijah rather was a man of passion like us. He eats, he uses toilet, he sleeps, he prayed, rain stopped. He prayed again. Rain came. Ah, someone here. I see multitude gathered to celebrate with you this year. Amen. Please don't forget we have seen that if we are going to experience the entrenchment of divine pattern in our families, we must build and sustain a culture of worship. We worship God. Do you know what Joshua told the children of Israel? He said, our forefathers, including Terah, the father of Abraham, worshipped other gods and died in Haran. He said, but God took our father Abraham. He separated Abraham from the worship of idols. He blessed him. 
and no one can forget him and made him a father of nations. May God grant you grace not to worship the idols your parents worship. Amen. Can you say a good amen? amen? We have again seen what an altar is. An altar is a place of spiritual engagement where matters that are spiritual are resolved. Another way we can entrench divine power in our families is through the prayer of intersection which we are going to be doing today. The prayer of intersection. Someone shout the prayer of intersection. Prayer of intercession. Some believers are too lazy. You can't pray for one hour. Sowing a seed does not substitute for your prayers. Some can't even pray for 10 minutes. Say pray. <sighs> you must engage prayer. Father, what my mother suffered, I can't suffer it. Amen? Some of your parents are looking at you. They are afraid right now. Oh, so what happened to me will not happen to my daughter. Someone shall God forbid. God forbid. I'm a child that my parents were so afraid of me because so many demonic prophecies were spoken over my life. So many, so many. Till tomorrow, I'm sure my mom still look at me and be, I hope, I hope. It's too late now. I have crossed over from darkness away to light. <laughs> Lift up your right hand. You will bury your child. <laughs> I don't know where that, who is that for, but I think somebody here, whether you are online, you are part of this server, I don't know where you are part of it. You will bury your child. Amen. I said, you will not bury your child. Amen. One day, my mom entered the room and then, uh, Entered the house, came to visit and invited me and said I should come into one of the rooms. So I entered and I sat down and he said, why you will not have your other children? I know the concern of a mother. Because there is this belief that if you don't have the many, what if they die? There is also a belief that if you burn the many, one go get head. Lift up your right hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, Jacob had 12 sons. They all became a, 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 a nation. They all became a nation. They all became a nation. They all became the 12 tribes of Israel. Rebecca carried three children, two, three, two uh, children in his womb. God said, two nations are in your womb. God spoke to Abraham. He said, kings shall come out of you. God spoke to Sarah. He said, stars shall come out of your womb. Stars, kings shall come out of your loins. Kings shall come out of your womb. I don't know how many children you have, but I'm declaring this. I let your momentum in me that we come over your 12 sons or 12 daughters. I declare none of your children shall be wayward. None of your children shall die before you. None of your children shall bring shame to you. None of your children shall walk naked on the street. None of your children shall be drug addicts. None of your children shall be cottage. None of your children shall end up in prison. None of your children shall be mentally imbalanced. None of your children shall die before you. None of your children will bring shame to you. None of your children will bring shame to your family. I look at my mother and I told my mother, Mama, don't bother. I'm done with two. And these two, they are nations. These two, they are generational people. These two, they are stars. These two, they shall roar. These two, they shall shine. These two shall excel. These two shall do well. These two shall prosper. These two shall live and not die. These two shall shine as stars. These two shall serve God. These two shall glorify God. These two shall bring glory to God. These two shall bring honor to my family. Prayer of intersection you rise up as an authority as a child of God I say never again there are people who in their mind they are wishing that your children will not do well they are wasting their time because you will cover your children with prayers you will cover their future with prayers you will cover the academics with are you see here <laughs> morning day and night we pray for our children Morning, day, and night. Because there are those who don't like your children. Oh. For those of us who are pastors, we are aware. Anything they do, eh? see pastor children. <laughs> we go see now, we go see now. See what? You will see. 
But what you will see will be glory. Yeah. Those who are evil tongues shall not prosper over my children. Yeah. Those who are evil, that's it, that's it. when they're young, that's what they do. When they grow up, now they're going to show pastor, show me. No. We have dedicated them to whom? To God. Nothing you put in God's hand can ever be wayward. They may make mistakes, but they are a miracle. Am I praying the same thing for your children? Pray of intercession. Pray of intercession. If you have nothing to pray for yourself, pray for your children. If you are nothing to pray for your husband, pray for, for, your, for yourself, rather. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife. It was Isaac that prayed for Rebecca. Prayer of intersection. Honey, you are not eating this morning? No. Why? There's a prayer to pray. <laughs> Dali, I prepare your meal. Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you on time. Today, I have a business to do. Please, this Saturday, I want to be alone. Until believers take very seriously the importance of prayer, you will never see God. Very quickly. God's intervention in our families is at the instance of our prayer of intersection. Prayer of intersection. You carry your baby, small baby, you are already speaking over the life of that girl. You are speaking over the life of your son. So that whatever any man is speaking that is not of God will not find a place. Because your child is already occupied with your prayers. Am I communicating? Yeah. Oh, ca ca if you can hear me, say yes. yes sir. Some children are victims of lack of prayers. Some couples or some spouse are victims of lack of prayers. Rakatasha, Papa Koshia. A few days ago, I was going somewhere, something, something, you know, I heard the voice of the Lord say something to me about my wife. And I said, No. My wife and I, we were together when my son was preaching. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. That prophecy must come to pass. Amen. That revelation must come to pass. Amen. Can you say Amen? amen. Can I prophesy this over someone? Yes, and it's going to magnet your life. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, the enemies of your marriage will not sympathize with you. Yes. I'm sure you didn't get that. I'm going to declare it again. The enemies of your marriage will not have any opportunity to sympathize with you. Yes. But they will celebrate with you. Yes. So I'll, if you want God to intervene in your life and your family, you must pray. Father Gatosha. Prayer of intercession means you are doing it on behalf of someone. But in this instance, you are doing it on behalf of your family. Father, unity must happen in my family. Prosperity must happen in my family. People can't be living. You look at the family. Nobody is going anywhere. Ah, no, it can happen. If you are the only one doing, it, you're doing well your family, your family is still in problem. How many of you will be happy that you are driving your Lamborghini and your elder sister is naked on the street? And your friends who came from China for business to say, is that not your younger sister? It can't happen. They must know God. They must serve God. Amen. You are not saying amen. amen. I know I'm preaching in Africa where you want everybody to die. There are some people that will not die. There are people that must live. They must serve God like you are serving God. Yes. Say yes. yes Prayer of intersection. Ezekiel 22 verse number 33 or 30 rather. Ezekiel 22 30. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge, bridge the gap, stand the gap before me for the line, for the family. I need a man, not men. I need a woman who will rise up for a end. Karabatosha. Likaro Roslin, I commit you to God. You are going for your service now. I cover the journey. I cover your entire stay in the youth service. In the hand of God. I ask that the hand of the Lord will be with you. People will go for your service and not return. But you will go and return. You have a destiny to fulfill. You are a prophetic daughter. Where are those mothers? Where are those mothers? God said, I am waiting, looking, looking. I'm searching. Who will stand on the gap? Who will rise up for the Amorekbe family? Who will rise up from the Jews family? Who will rise up for the Joanna family? Who will rise up for the Odigas family? Who will rise up? I am waiting for prayer. I need your prayers. <sighs> they are sleeping. That I should not destroy it, but I found the Bible said the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Get up! Herod is on his way to kill this child. Escape with the child. And it does so. 
an intercessor escape with destinies escape with blessings that when the devil comes he will find a place lift up your right hand like this in the name of jesus christ may god grant you grace to be an intercessor in your family Amen. finally this morning the third way you entrench divine pattern in the family is by promoting the culture of love and unity culture of what one of the enemy's greatest weapon against families is to cause disunity. Any family that is not united cannot prosper. The problem in the family of Jacob started with disunity. He started hating their brother Joseph. When you are part of a family where there is an area scattered, so to say, he will talk to this one, go and talk to this one. Sometimes it could be parents. Some parents, some parents, some parents. Huh. It's only God. They talk to this one, they talk to this one. They talk to this one, they talk to this one. They tell this one one thing, they turn to this one. They support this one against this one. <laughs> you will soon go to Egypt. Wise parents should hold their children together. If this one comes to tell you anything about this one, tell the person, oh, your brother don't mean any harm. Your brother don't hate you. I will talk to your brother. Uh -uh. So parents will do that. Say, hey, when I carry her for a womb, now wahala I give me. Now the same wahala I say they give me till today. That is a wicked mother. That is a wicked father. Am I communicating? The one that brings money is your favorite. The one that cannot bring is of the devil. Parents don't do that. It's the same womb they came from. If one does wrong, be bold. Listen to me. Parents who are not bold to tell their children the truth because you have eaten bribe, you will destroy your family. Am I communicating? Come, am I speaking this morning? Some parents have spoiled their first child. They can't talk to their first child. He's the king of the family. See how he has become a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter. Every child is unique. Let me repeat that very quickly. Every child is unique. No, no, I didn't hear you very well. Every child is unique. Don't promote one to destroy another. I have a son. He's my first child. What I do for my daughter, I don't do for him. I can pamper my daughter, I can buy him, what, buy her this. But my son, huh, men must be tough. Come on, get up. Come on, recently he had in head. I said, oh, yeah, come on, get up, come on, get up. Can't lie down there and be waiting for sympathy. Get up! Get up! Get up! He says, a first child, a mother. Some have also spread their last born, the baby of the family. He has become a puppet. He can't do anything. You pamper him like teddy bear. Says a last born. Last born. Live and I'm a last born, and if he came when I take close room, which room? When you die, you will carry the last born along. Am I communicating this morning? Yes, Say last born. Oh, my only child. My only child. God's only child. He sent it to die. Yes, God's only child. Say go and die. Which will, now you first guess only child. That only child. Prepare that only child to be an exceptional child. In character. Ah, come on. When people see only child, they say, wow. Not only child can't do anything. You'll be sleeping. So they say, don't talk to my only child. We will see. Promote love and unity in your family. Be fair. Be just. Be sincere. One time, I don't remember any of my one of my children came. I was telling me something about the other one. I said, uh, 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 don't mention that. There is nothing like that. It's your mind that is playing the first one on you. You say, I know you know. Some parents also do this and say, you know, you know, I've written my we already. I've written. 
Now your name now put. Your name now put. Everything now for you. You not go get peace for grave. Oh. They go dig your body, come out. Amen. We can settle the matter. Why will you say that among your children? Even if you have to favor one, must you say it? Say, I've given you everything. My cutlass, my home, my bicycle. I gave to you. <laughs> my kekena pepper I gave to you. That is a cause. Bless your children. Bless them. Can I tell you, the greater blessing you can give to your children is to train them in the way they should go. You're not going to live here forever. When you are gone, wherever you are, you can look with pride. And they can look at you and celebrate you 25 years after. I say, mommy was a matriarch. Daddy was a patriarch. But if you are in an area scattered before you die, they will scatter your grave. I'm talking sense this morning. Yes, I'm a pastor. I settle matters all the time. Traceable to the family. Because there is somebody who scattered the family. Who scattered it. Promote love and unity. Tell your neighbor, promote love and unity in your family. Tell the person by your right. Tell them very quickly. You carry phone. You call your relatives abroad. You lie against your siblings. That you went to one prophet. The prophet said, Ezekiel is the one troubling Joan. Joan will now send you money to go and give prophet. Who are you? Are you not Iscarot? Plus Judas? Take this thought and then we are done. Lift up and say, divine pattern must happen in my family. Divine pattern must happen in my family. Take this thought quickly, then we pray. Love and unity at the bedrock of every family where the hand of God is at work and his glory is clearly seen. When you see a family working together, you see prosperity happening, you see joy. There is love and unity. There is love and unity. Not fake love, oh. Because there's a fake love that when they have food to eat from your table, they love you. I'm talking about the genuine love. When one falls, everybody rally around that one. I said, no, we are with you. We are not the one that you don't have a job again. They will call you again. That one is fake love. And people like that identify them. Bedrock of the family is love and unity. Jesus said, any house divided against itself cannot stand. Lift up your right hand. For all of you who are here, both in your immediate family, and I said, the family members, I decree, I decree this morning the grace for love and unity. Amen. Anyone who is positioned to cause hatred and disunity, God will expose them. Amen. God will touch their heart. Amen. God will visit them. Amen. Let me ask you this question. Case I've said something you don't like. Case I've said something you don't like. How many of you need love and unity in your family? Amen. If you need to raise your hand and say a good amen. amen. Are you still here this morning? 1 John 4 verse number 16. He said, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. He said, God is love. Who is love? love? Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. You see that? God is love. Then verse no, 1 John 4 verse number 8. He said, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So if you don't walk in love, you don't promote love in your family, God said, you don't know God. He said, if you promote love, he said, God is love. God will be in you. God will be for you. God will be with you. Can you say amen? amen. Are you still here? I told a young man, he lost the father not too long ago. He was the one so blessed in the family. So blessed. Really, really blessed. And he came to me before the barrier. I was telling me about how the siblings are behaving. I said, do they have money? He said, no. Uh -huh. So what is your problem? And I said, listen to me, if you are printing anything like souvenir, like people do here, say from the family or from the children. Yes, from the children. Print it that way. Not from Mr. and Mrs. Because now there the will like come from. Are you following? And share to them. Do you know what he did? He listened. He did that. Do you know after the burial, he came to me and said, Pastor, we have never had unity in the family like this. He said they were coming to pray for me. 
I said, that is how it is. When one light shines very well, he drives away darkness. And I said, you are a light shining in the family. Not the one that you all your friends will come. I said, don't bother the, what ask them so that it will not be as if they didn't contribute money that they, like they do here. Ask them whatever they bring. And you are not the elders. Let your elder brother still be elder brother. Oh. Don't possess elder brother from him because you have money. Go to him. And he said, Pastor, I follow your advice. My elder brother was so happy because for people money, they make them colo. Are you following? <laughs> Are you still here? They take elder brother from the elder brother. The elder brother will not tell you, bros, bros, I don't be doing like that. You are cause. Your elder brother may be poor, but he's the eldest. Honor him and see how honor with am I communicating? God bless you.